couple months ago, we asked you who your favorite photographers were and put out a tutorial on how to shoot and edit like them. Since then, so many of you have asked us to create another one about Brandon Wolfel's style. And some of you did not. Anyway, here's a tutorial on how to shoot and edit like Brandon Wolfel. Before we get started, we want to remind you that the purpose of this tutorial is not so that you can blatantly rip off Brandon. Instead, we hope that you're able to identify aspects of his photography that you can apply to your own unique style. Also, we don't want to discount Brandon's expertise, experience, and creativity. If you like his work, consider picking up his book, Luminescence, and we'll link it in the description below. Finally, if this isn't your style, feel free to fast forward to the end of this tutorial where we'll show you some Lightroom tips and tricks that we haven't covered before. Let's get started. Brandon uses some key tools to achieve his look. We're using a few of them today. They are fairy lights, 1970s serial killer glasses, a CD, and a prism. He favors a 50 millimeter lens and the occasional 85 and 35. Try to shoot at blue hour and later, depending on how your camera performs in low light. Also, be sure to shoot with a wide open aperture to get a super shallow depth of field. Have your model hold fairy lights in front of her face to illuminate it. Grab the end of the strand and hold it near your lens to add drama to the whole fairy light situation. You can use a prism or CD underneath, to the side, or in front of your lens to reflect more of the fairy lights into your shot. This can create some pretty unique looks, so have some fun with it. Another woeful staple is using neon and other artificial lights to illuminate your subject at night. We went to Chinatown to make use of all the ambient light. Choose a backdrop with plenty of lights in the background so they'll add bokeh behind your model. Again, use fairy lights or any exterior artificial lights that can light up your model without casting unpleasant shadows. While Brandon favors Photoshop, you can get a similar look in Lightroom. Looking at reference photos of his, I noticed he favors a cotton candy color palette. I started off by adjusting the white balance. I made the temperature a little cooler and adjusted the tint to be more magenta. Next, I jumped down to the tone curve. I needed to lift the black point to give it that crushed black look. I also finessed the curve just a bit, keeping the line slightly above the dotted linear guide. Back in our basic adjustment section, I lifted the exposure and contrast, brought the highlights down to around negative 30, lifted the shadows to 70, and slightly adjusted the whites and blacks. I brought the clarity down just a little bit and lifted the overall saturation to nine. For the hues, I brought the reds, oranges, and yellows to the left. This makes the reds more magenta, the oranges a little more red, and the yellow a touch more orange. I also wanted the aqua to be more blue and the blue to be more aqua, which sounds counterintuitive, but it worked out well. I also thought the saturation was a bit over the top, so I lowered it almost entirely across the board, except for the purple and magenta. Remember, we gotta get that cotton candy. And some adjustments to the luminance helps brighten things up a touch. For split toning, I really wanted more blue in the shadows, so I used a hue of 224 and a saturation of 16 to bring that in. I also wanted some pink in the highlights, so I added a hue of 292 at a saturation of three to do just that. I also added a sharpening of eight with masking set to 96, so only the most in-focus areas get sharpened. Since I was at an ISO of 2500, I decided to add a little noise reduction, just don't overdo it. I also added a dehaze of 18. This adds a bit of overall contrast and saturation in, so if your version of Lightroom doesn't have dehaze, just add about 10 of both contrast and saturation. One thing that works well to add warmth and light to your model's face is using the radial filter. It's the circle to the left of the adjustment brush. I made an ellipse in the shape of Rachel's face and clicked the invert mask option. Then I added warmth and lifted the shadows and highlights. Another trick to adding more dramatic color into the photo is using the graduated filter. I clicked and dragged from the right side pulling to the left, stopping when the center point reached Rachel. Then I chose a pink hue to play off the aqua hue on the left side. For less intensity, just drag the slider down to your desired level of saturation. Now, if you need to mask out areas of your model that you don't want affected by the graduated filter, just click the brush option, hold down the Alt or Option key, and click Enable Auto Mask. Click the O key to see your current mask, and while still holding down the Alt or Option key, paint away the part of your model that you don't want the graduated filter to affect. I painted out Rachel's arm so that it's no longer a part of the mask. One other thing you can do is composite in some fairy light bokeh from one shot into another in Photoshop. For example, I had a test photo I did inside with the lights. Since the background is completely black, I was able to just drop it in onto another photo that I thought would benefit from the added depth. Just change the transfer mode to lighten, and there you have it. One final thing I did was add a graduated filter across most of the image with a light yellow hue to add a little extra warmth as a finishing touch. Recap, pick up a Brandon Wolfel starter pack. Using a 50 millimeter with a wide aperture, shoot at blue hour or night with lots of ambient light. 
Just rewatch the whole editing section again. Bonus tip. Use the hashtag doing the Brandon Wolfel and wait for those crispy likes to roll in. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this and subscribe if you haven't already. And also we just released our first monthly newsletter filled with personal anecdotes, our current inspiration, and we highlight the Instagram of one of our subscribers. If you want to sign up, head to mangostreetlab.com and enter your email at the bottom. One last thing, if you like these Mango Street shirts and you want one for yourself, head to the link in the description. We'll see you next week.